Hello everyone! In this tutorial, we're going to learn web scraping in Python with Scrapy. Scrapy is the most complete web scraping framework in Python, and it has many advantages over other scraping tools. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up Scrapy, create our first project, and build a spider that scrapes data from websites. So, let's get started! To install Scrapy, first we have to download Anaconda. So we go to anaconda.com and then we click on Get Started. Then we click on the last option that says Download and we check which is our operating system. In my case I have a Mac, so I'm going to click on the first option. Then wait until the file is downloaded and in the meantime I'm going to tell you why we're using Anaconda. Basically, you can just install Scrapy with pip install Scrapy. However, you need to install some dependencies. This can make the installation a little bit harder, especially on Windows. Fortunately, if you use Anaconda, you can manage this easily. Now I'm gonna open the file that I downloaded and I'm going to click next until the installation process is finished. Now we have to open Anaconda, just double click on the icon. Now we have to wait until the window is open. Now we have to create a new virtual environment. So we click on the option environment on the left and now we click on new and we give the name of our new virtual environment. In my case I'm going to name it my underscore scrapy underscore vnv which stands for virtual environment. So now you can choose the version of Python and now you click on create. So now the virtual environment is going to be created. You just have to wait until it's done. And once this is created, you have to open a terminal. So click on the play button and then open terminal. And now as you can see, within parentheses is the name of our virtual environment. So now we can install Scrapy correctly. So to install Scrapy, write conda install c condaforge Scrapy. Then press enter and wait until the installation is done. Now here you see proceed, now write y. So it means yes to continue the installation. And now wait until everything is finished. To set up PyCharm and uh, an Anaconda environment, we have to write the following command. Which Python in case you're on Mac? Or where Python in case you're on Windows? Now the output is the, the path where your Python interpreter is located. So we have to copy this because we're going to use to sync PyCharm with, with the Anaconda environment. Now open up PyCharm and locate the environment folder that we just copied. So in my case I, I'm on Mac so I can press Shift Command G to go directly to this path. So as you can see here I have the path so I'm going to compare it with my the path that I got from the terminal. So I have this in my on my Mac this is the path I have to go. So you can do it manually in case you are on Windows. So what we want is this ENVS folder, this NVS folder. So this is what we're going to open in PyCharm. So we click on it and we open this folder inside of PyCharm. And now we have the folder in PyCharm. Now to set up the environment, just go to File and then Settings on Windows or go to PyCharm and then Preference on Mac. So I'm going to Preference because I'm on Mac and now we have to click on the option that says Projects and VS. And now click on Project Interpreter. Then we go to, to this icon, we click on it and then we click on Add. Then we go to Conda Environment and then we click on Existing Environment. Then we search our path. We just have to paste the, the same path we copied before. We paste and we automatically get the Python interpreter we need 
to sync PyCharm with the Anaconda environment. So just click on OK and that's it. Now Anaconda and PyCharm are set up. Now the last thing we have to install to finish this process is protgo. So just write conda install c conda forge protgo to install this last package we need for Scrapy and Anaconda to work correctly on PyCharm. If you're a Mac, you probably have noticed that the folder that contains Anaconda is hidden. If you're on Windows, you shouldn't have this problem, so you can skip this video. Okay, to fix this issue on Mac, just open the terminal and run the following command. ch flags no hidden. Then add the path of the hidden folder. So in this case, I can just drag the hidden folder to the terminal to obtain the path. So I drag it and now I'm gonna add a space and press enter to run this command. Now, in case you get this message, permission denied, you have to add sudo to the command. So just write the command again and now add sudo in the beginning of the command. So I'm gonna write sudo and now you just have to write your password. After you write your password, the command should run successfully and you should see the folder now unhidden on the directory. And that's it. Now you can see all the contents inside the Anaconda folder. In this video, I'm going to show you the commands available on Scrapy. So first, go and open a terminal. To do so, go to Anaconda and click on the project and then click on open terminal. And then you'll get this window that you see here on my screen. You can also open a terminal inside of PyCharm. Just go to the left corner and click on terminal and then you'll see the terminal inside of PyCharm. Now that we're on the terminal, let's write Scrapy to get all the commands available. So now I wrote and I run the code and now we can see the version of Scrapy. In this case, I have the version uh, Scrapy 2.4.1 and we can also see the syntax that we can use to write a command. So we write scrapy, then the command, and then any option or argument. And then we see the available commands. So we have a list here, and not all of them are so useful. Actually, I don't use all of them. I just use a couple of them in my everyday project. So first we have the bench, and it's just to to have a, a benchmark test just to see how Scrapy works uh, in our computer. So for example, I'm going to write the command Scrapy space bench to see how it works this on my computer. So let's see how efficient Scrapy is on my machine. So now as you can see, scraping, uh, it's making a test And we see the message that the spider was opened. Then we see the number of pages scraped and the speed. And then we have a section with the stats. So we have the request count. In this case, my machine has 462. Uh, the response count, which is the same. And other important stats. Now let's see the second command. So write scrape again. And now we have the command available. And the second command we're going to see it's fetch. So fetch helps us get the HTML markup of a website. So we have to write now scrapy and then fetch. And then we have to write the name of the website we want to get the HTML markup from. So in this case, I'm going to test it with Google. So I'm going to write google.com. So here I got an error because I didn't write the HTTP protocol, so you have to write it as shown in the last line of code. So in the command, write http.google.com and then everything will work fine. So now I run this command and you see the HTML markup of google.com. Now let's write scrape again to see one of the most important commands available, which is gen spider. 
this is a command we're going to use often that allows us to generate spiders with a predefined template. So every time we want to create a new spider to scrape a website, we're going to use this command and we're going to use it a lot in the next videos. Next, we have the settings command that only will display the default setting. And then we have the shell, which is really important to test our code. So if you don't want to create a new spider and you just want to test your code on a website, you can use the shell command to test it. And then we have the start project command, which will help us create a new project on Scrapey. And finally, we have the version command, which will tell us the version of Scrapey that is running on our computer. And that's it. In the next video, we're going to see how to create a new project with the start project command. Now I'm going to show you how to start a new project with Scrapey. First, let's write the command Scrapey start project and then write any name you want for your project. In this case, I'm going to use the name spider underscore tutorial, but you can use any other name. Then press enter to run the command. And after that, you'll see the message that you created using a template directory and then that you can start your spider with CD. So you have to change the directory to this new folder you created. Now I'm going to show you how my directory looks like. So I have this ENVS folder and inside this folder I have the new spider created which I named spider tutorial and inside I have another folder with the same name and inside that folder it's the spider folders which will contain all the spiders we're going to create later. Inside this new folder we just created we also have this scrapey.cfg file which will help us run commands and now let's check other files inside the spider tutorial folder. The first file we're going to see is the items.py. Items provide the ability to better structure the data we scrape. We don't have to make use of scrapey items right away because we can simply drill page elements as they are structured, as I'm going to show you later. We also have the middlewares.py. Here we can plug custom functionality to process the responses and requests. If you open that file, you'll see that there is a spider middleware and a downloader middleware. I'm going to explain you how they work later. The pipelines.py stores items we scrape in a database like Mongo or SQL. And finally, the settings.py adds extra configurations to our project. So that's all the files we just obtained after creating the new project. If you didn't understand any of them in particular, don't worry because we're going to check them in detail in the following videos. Now it's time to create our first spider. But first, let's have a look at the website we're going to scrape. This website is called Worldometers and it contains the population of many countries. As you can see, the countries are sorted by the population they have. So each country have a detail of the population in the past 50 years. So now I'm going back to my terminal and I'm going to change the directory to this spider tutorial folder as it indicates here in the message we got before. So I do cd spider underscore tutorial and now I'm located inside my spider tutorial folder. So now to start a new spider, we just have to write the command scrapey gen spider and then the name of the spider you want to create. In this case, I'm gonna name it as the website worldometer then you have to copy the link of the website uh, as it is. So I just copied this link and now I'm going to delete the HTTP protocol because Scrapey takes care of this. Uh, and I'm going to delete the last forward slash too because Scrapey takes care of this too. With this set, we just run this command to create our first spider. So press enter. And now we got the message that the spider worldometers was created using a basic template. 
So we just created this first spider and now we're going to check this in PyCharm. So now I'm in PyCharm and as you can see, I'm in the NVS folder, which contains our project we created, which we named Spider Tutorial. And inside this Spider Tutorial, it's again another Spider Tutorial folder. And inside is the spiders that contains all the spiders we're going to create, which includes the Wordometers spider we just created some seconds ago. And I'm going to open it up. So as you can see here, we have the template of this spider. So first we have the name of the spider. Uh, if you remember, I named it Worldometers and that's the name. This name is unique, so you can create another spider with the same name. You have to use a different name. So then we have the allowed domains. This is the domains that are supposed to be scraped. So if the website has any other, uh, let's say add or something else with another link, it's not going to be scraped unless it has this worldometers.info domain. So only the links that have worldometers.info are going to be scraped. Keep in mind that we should only leave the root of the page, also known as the home page, in allow domains. So in this case, we should leave only worldometers.info slash. Then we have the start underscore URLS. And as you can see, scraping automatically added the HTTP protocol. We have to manually add the S of security, which it's in the, in the link of the website. We add it just manually. So then we have the, this function parse with self and response parameters. And we're going to edit this function to scrape the website in the next video. So we will continue with this tutorial in a second. I just wanna let you know that I created a Python cheat sheet that covers libraries for data analysis, web scraping, and machine learning. You can download this cheat sheet for free using the link in the description below. In this video, I'll explain you some things you need to know about the templates we use to scrape websites with Scrapy. And also, I'll show you how to find elements with Scrapy. Okay, in Scrapy, there are two popular templates, the Scrapy Spider and the Crawl Spider. The Scrapy Spider is the simplest spider and the one we'll use more often in this course. It doesn't provide any special functionality, but we can customize this template to scrape the way we want. On the other hand, the crawl spider is the most commonly used spider for crawling regular websites. It provides some mechanisms for following links by defining a set of rules. Note that crawling is not the same as scraping a website. A crawler usually browses the World Wide Web for the purpose of web indexing. But web scraping is more about extracting information from websites. So a crawl spider might not be the best suited for your web scraping project. Now let's have a look at the scrapy spider template. So this template has by default a class with the name of our spider. Here we'll send requests from the start underscore URLs spider attribute and we'll call the spiders method parse for each of the resulting responses. So here we will yield all the data extracted. We'll see this template in action in the following videos. But now it's time to see how to find elements with Scrapy. So in Scrapy, we use response to find elements. This is just like the driver in Selenium or the soup in Beautiful Soup. This response represents the response we get after we send requests to a website. Now, unlike Selenium, we can only find elements with XPath on Scrapy. Scrapy doesn't have functions like find element by IDs or class names or tag names, but we can still find these elements writing an equivalent XPath. So to find elements with XPath on Scrapy, we have to write response.xpath and inside parentheses, write the XPath syntax we've been using so far. So double slash tag square brackets the at sign with the attribute name equal to the attribute value. Now, just like on Selenium or on Beautiful Soup, we can find multiple elements with Scrapy. In this case, we have to use 
get all to get all the elements with the same x path and here again if you use get all you'll get a list with all the elements that match the x path inside the list but if you use that get you will only get a single element finally you'll see later that we'll use a lot the yield keyword don't be afraid if you never worked with yield before because it works the same way the return keyword works when you define a function. However, with the yield keyword, we can return values from a function without destroying the states of its local variable. And that's it. Now you're ready to start scraping websites with Scrapy. Before we start scraping this website, let's test our code with the shell command. So first, we're going to inspect this website. So we right click on the idle and click on inspect. So as you can see in the HTML of this website, this title is inside this H1 tag. So we can locate this by pressing Ctrl F or Command F on Mac. And then we can find any element by writing the X path. So if we want to find this h1 we just write h1 but first we write double forward slash and then the element highlighted in green is the element we want so we just verify that this double slash h1 is the x path of the title we want now let's go back to the terminal to test some code and i'm going to clean this app and now let's write the command scrapy shell Then you'll get the three arrows that indicate that we are in shell mode. So now we can test our code. So let's start by making a request. Just write r equal to scrapy that request and then open parenthesis. And inside write url and equal to the url we just copied before. So I'm going to copy again this wordometer's url and now I'm going to paste it. Now I press enter and I can fetch this. So I write fetch parenthesis r. Now with this, we open the spider and we see the results of this request. Now we can see also the HTML of this website. We just have to write response that body. Here I made a typo, so I have to, to modify it and write response that body. And now we get the HTML of this website. So it's not in a readable format, but it's just a way to get it. Now we can get also the specific element we want. So we can write response that X path and inside we can write the X path expression we just saw before. So double slash H1 and we get the element that contains the title, which is countries in the world by population. So now if we want to get only the text and not the whole element or node we have to write response that x path and inside the expression we have to add the text so we write slash and text with parentheses now as you can see we just got the text element but we still have the data value so if we want just to get the plain text you have to add that get and parentheses so now i press enter and i just got the text that is the title without anything else now let's say we want to get the country names from the list as you can see the country names is inside a, a tag whose parent is a td tag so to locate it we just write double slash td and then slash a so now back to the terminal we're going to write that xpath expression so we write response that xpath you know we delete the the expression we wrote before and write the expression we just built. So it's td slash a slash text to get the text. And in this case, since we have a lot of elements, we have to write get all with parentheses. Now we press enter and we get all the countries listed in the website. So that's it. Every time you want to test some code, use the shell command. In the next video, we're going to build our first spider using Scrapy. Now it's time to create our first spider. 
So open the work documents that py file we created before, which is inside the spiders folder. And once it's open, let's edit the parse function. Every time we want to locate an element, we're going to use the response variable. So we write response.xpath and inside parentheses, we write the xpath expression. So we're going to use the xpath expressions that we used in the shell command in the video before. And now I define a title variable, which is equal to response.xpath and inside is the xpath expression we tested before, which is the double slash h1 that contains the title of the website. Now we include that get to get the text and the second variable we're going to define is the countries. So this one is obtained with the double slash td slash a as I explained you in the video before. So this is equal to response.xpath and now we write the xpath expression which is td slash a slash text parentheses. In case you don't remember this xpath expression, I highly recommend you check the shell video that is before this one where we build this xpath expression. Now to display this data in a dictionary, I'm going to use the GIL keyword and open curly braces and then write titles, colon, title, then comma, and then the country name. So I just define countries and colon countries. And now I'm going to open up uh, the terminal. Of course, you can use the terminal inside PyCharm, but I'm going to use the terminal that I opened with Anaconda, which is absolutely the same. So I'm located in my spider tutorial folder. This is important. You have to be located in the folder that has the scrapy.cfg file. The name of this folder is the same as the name of the project you created before. In this case, the name of my project is spider underscore tutorial. So now that you're located in that folder inside the terminal, let's write the command scrapy crawl and now Let's write the name of the spider we created. In this case, it's worldometers. I just copied and now I'm gonna paste it. So I write worldometers and now press enter. And now we get all the country names and the title. So as you can see here, I have all the countries listed in the website and that's it. In the following videos, I'm going to show you how to store this data in a CSV file or JSON file. Hey, hope you're enjoying this tutorial. If you'd like to master web scraping in Python by solving cool projects like this one, consider taking my course. There, we will learn pagination, infinite scrolling, weights, how to export data to SQLite, MongoDB, and more. For more details, check the link in the description below. In this video, I want to show you how to export the data extracted to a JSON file or CSV file. So far, we extracted the titles and countries, and what we're going to do now is to extract the population. So here we have the countries column, and here is the population column. So I'm going to inspect it by clicking on this button, and now I inspect the, this element, and as you can see here, we got the TD element which contains the population of the country we inspected. And as we can see here, the A element contains the country name and the TR contains the data of the whole row. Also, each row is inside this element TR and we're going to locate this element in PyCharm. So here we create a new variable named rows, which is going to be equal to response.xpath. And inside parentheses, we write double slash and then tr and as you might remember tr stands for table row and we have multiple rows in this table so we have to loop through them so we write for row in rows then colon and then we introduce this block of code inside the loop okay now i comment out the title variable because we're not gonna use it anymore and then we'll use the row variable as a reference. So we delete response and we write row. So now this is my new reference. And then I write the dot sign to indicate that I'm using the row variable as a reference. And then we remove the all 
and we leave only that get with parentheses because we extract one element per iteration. Okay, now I'm going to explain you what we're doing, but now here on the website. Okay, now we're here in the A element and this is in green. And as we can see, the TR is the parent node of the TD and the TD is the parent node of the A element. And to get to this element, we write the XPath double slash TR and then slash TD and then slash A. And as you can see here, I got the same result. So now I'm going to copy this XPath and I'm going to PyCharm to compare this with the other XPath I have. So here I paste it and now let's compare. Here the element TR is the equivalent of the dot sign that I have here in green. And this is the reference that I have that represents one element of this rows list. And here the rest of the XPath is absolutely the same. So here I just have to remove one slash and then I delete the XPath on the right. So I remove this and now I duplicate this line of code and here I'm going to create the population variable. So I write population and now we go back to the website and here we locate the population. So we click here on this inspect button and we inspect the population and we got here the element that represents the population of this country. And this is inside a TD element and we can use square brackets to locate this TD element. So here we can delete this and write square brackets. And if we write number one, we get the first element, number two, the second, and number three, the third, which is the population we want. And here on the right, we can navigate through all the TD elements that were matched with our XPath. And all of them are population data. Now we go to PyCharm and we're going to paste this XPath that we built. So I paste it here. I add the hash sign to comment this out. And here we're going to replace the XPath that we uh, duplicated before. So here this dot sign represents the TR element and we already have the TR element. And now we have to introduce the TD square brackets three. So here I write TD square brackets three and that's everything we need. And now we're going to insert this population variable inside the yield. So here I write population inside quotes and also I add the variable. Okay, now it's time to run this spider. So we open up the terminal and here we write the following command. So we write scrapy crawl and then the name of the spider, which is wordometers. So now this is the command. Now we add dash O and we write the name of the CSV file or JSON file where we want to save this data. So in this case, I'm going to name it population underscore one that CSV. So now it's ready. So I'm going to press enter. And now let's wait a couple of seconds until this is done. Okay, the execution is finished. And now I'm going to PyCharm to open this CSV file. So I open it up and here is the data we extracted. So now let's verify if this data is correct. So here, let's check if the population of China is the same. So I go to the website and as we can see here is the same population. So now let's check the last country and this one. Let's verify here. So I scroll all the way down and here is the same population. So the data was properly extracted. OK, now let's export all this data to a JSON file. So we run the same command, but in this case, we modify the extension. So it's going to be that JSON. So now it's ready. So we run the command and wait a couple of seconds. Now it's done. So we open the JSON file in PyCharm and the data is here. And as we can see, all the data was properly extracted. And that's it. In the next part of this course, we're going to see how to do pagination, export data to databases like SQLite or MongoDB, scrape dynamic websites with Splash and more. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. That's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.